Yo, 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 it's your homeboy, Kiwosagi, in the building. Welcome to episode 86 of One Piece Gist. In this episode, we talk about One Piece chapter 761. So initially, I postponed 761 so I could sort of do a mashup between 761 and 762. But man, when I started talking about, you know, that stuff in the middle, it just, it's too much. I can't do it. You know, this is my third time. And I've just given up on trying to do the collaboration thing. I just have to make them stand alone because the chapter was re the chapter is really basic. So for a chapter review, it's not all that. But when we go into the theories, you know, there are so many doors that are open. But anyways, I think I've said enough and um, let's move on with the chapter review. So first of all, as usual, I'll have a review first and a discussion afterward. So review. This was an average chapter. Um, not much going for it. We just had, you know, a flashback. But, I mean, we did have something going for which was the middle. So, we had a flashback, and then we had a crazy, a bunch of crazy reveals and a really, really nice and interesting conversation. Um, and I won't say more than that without spoiling. So, that's pretty much the end of my spoiler-free review. And now we're going to move on to the discussion, which is full of spoilers, so you have been warned. Um, so, let's start. Boy, oh boy. Well, um, where do I start? I guess I'll just do this. Um, okay, I know I'm going to do. So we'll do this sort of in the order of, you know, how the chapter goes. So we'll start with the Jinbei thing. Um, pretty interesting because I, I'm pretty sure it's not sure Hoshi that's doing this thing with the Sea Kings. So I'm interested, I'm interested to see whether this is maybe the new Shichibu Kai. It's some kind of new merman. Maybe it's even Kaido, King of the Beasts. You know, think about his name. Maybe there's some connection there. Hopefully it's something, you know, meaningful and not just something fodder because... I mean, as much as most most cover stories are relevant, I can't think of one that wasn't. But that doesn't mean that all cover stories that will ever be released will be relevant, you know. So, or they could make this the first, you know, or the second. Because if there, if there is an irrelevant cover story, I can't really remember it. And I'm talking about cover story arcs, not just individual standalone cover stories. Um, yeah. So, I'm really interested to see how this cover story ends. I really think it's going to be something big and flashy, something really cool. But we'll just have to wait and see, really, won't we? Um, next, we move on to the Marines. And we find out why they won't be very active throughout the rest of this arc. So basically, the Marines, since then, they break... Well, they have they follow orders from three people. Fujitora, Maynard, and Bastille. Bastille's out of the picture. And since the birdcage is up, they literally can only follow orders from these other two, which is, you know, Maynard and Fujitora. We know where Fujitora lies. And in this chapter, Oda confirms that Maynard does not want to deal with all the drama and so we basically get you know a, a good understanding of why the marines won't be active throughout this the rest of this arc you know basically they'll be following orders from maynard who doesn't really want to do anything so you know consequently the admirals i'm sorry the marines the foot soldiers and stuff won't be doing much either and that's pretty much where that ends next we have the palace and you know we have doflamingo Fodorize and luffy nothing new nothing surprising I mean, you really shouldn't expect anything else if you if you have any if you have any good like reasoning or any good um, skills at you know gauging character strength levels. Um, for a long while, I mean, I, I've I've said that Doflamingo is gonna fight Luffy, and lo and behold, he's been doing just that. Now there was a nice panel of Luffy doing the oct octopus thing, and what really makes this nice to me is this is reminiscent of old Luffy, early One Piece Luffy, before he had Gear Second. You know, if he wanted to beat somebody, he really had to think outside the box. Um, be but the thing is, now that he has Gear Second, you know, it really it really closes a lot of those doors. I mean, the logical thing to do in most situations is to use Gear Second. So, you know, we can't really see those slightly more intuitive or ingenious, you know, things that Luffy used to do. And uh, this was just, you know, nice to see this. Because uh, we really haven't seen anything like this in quite a while. Usually Luffy just has, you know, sheer power and sheer speed. Uh, ever since you know water seven but you know the, the the real the real meat of this chapter is the monologue between doflamingo and law or the dialogue sorry but anyways i'm gonna skip that for now because that's really what made me repeat this video like twice because there is too much to talk about so i'll save that for last so um let's fast forward to the end when we have the flashback we finally see corazon and another very interesting character from order so corazon is basically a clown that hates children so very nice, very classic Oda, you know, always with the strange, interesting characters. Um, just like Doflamingo, he has sunglasses. And just like Doflamingo, he has, you know, the sort of feather coat that he's rocking. 
Um, but yeah, if you do pay attention, you will see a bit of makeup under one of his eyes, and you will notice this the sort of clown, you know, the clown smile, the clown, uh, yeah, the clown smile. Um, I think it's also called a Chelsea. Well, the thing is, I'm not quite sure if it's just a clown smile, like just makeup, or there's an actual Chelsea smile, and that's the interesting thing. So what's a Chelsea smile? A Chelsea smile is the sort of smile that the Joker has. It's a smile given to you, you know. It's basically a scar that forms a smile, and um, it's, it's just kind of graphic. There's a bit of a, you know, some some really dark history behind that. But yeah, the smile that you know the Joker has in the, in the Dark Knight that is a Chelsea smile. And you know, I I was thinking maybe he has a Chelsea smile. Maybe Doflamingo will give him that smile. But the thing is, and maybe that's the trauma. You know, maybe Doflamingo cut his th tongue out. Maybe that's why he can't talk. But the thing is, you know, upon reading it. It, it, it kind of sounds more like it's just pure trauma. Like he is so shocked that he can't talk. Maybe that's it. I'm really not quite sure what it is that, that I mean. But I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to be pretty sick and, you know, crazy. But the thing is, since he can't talk, you know, how is he going to develop this bond with the law? That's, that's something that I'm sort of keen to see. But, you know, being older, he's going to make this something really emotional. So when Corazon dies, he's going to be a character that, you know, started off as someone we really, really, really didn't care about. But, you know, when he, when he does die, it's going to be sad as hell. So I'm really hyped to see. How Oda plays this out. Oh, we also get a reminder that you know Law literally didn't have much um, time to live. He had three years. Okay, three years is a decent amount of time, but for compared to an average lifespan, that is a much. And you know, lo and behold, Law is still you know here twenty years later, you know, alive and kicking. And so this implies that Corazon did some shit to Law. Um, but the thing is, I mean, Cor you know, Law wants revenge against Doflamingo on behalf of Corazon. So. Is this what Doflamingo did to, to Corazon after Law joined, or is it what Doflamingo did to Corazon before before Law joined? They think that you know traumatized Corazon, so that's what I'm curious about. Um, but aside of, I mean, apart from that, we'll just have to wait for the next chapter before we can expand on that. But the real craziness, you know, comes in this next part. So, um, Doflamingo Law having this monologue. I mean, this dialogue. <laughs> I keep saying monologue. Sorry, but anyways, you know. Oda drops bombs, you know, atomic bombs. He nukes the place up and down the place. I mean, it just, it's crazy. I mean, I'm even, <laughs> I, I don't know what to say. But anyways, um, so the first thing we find out is the reason why Doflamingo can boss around CP0 and stuff isn't because he has some kind of crazy celestial dragon. Even though he does have that kind of heritage and all that kind of stuff, he is exiled. So the only reason why he can tell CP0 what to do is because he can tell the world government what to do. That's why he's a Shichibukai. It's, and the reason why, <laughs> furthermore, is because he has dirt on the world government. He can blackmail them. He has been blackmailing them, actually. And they can't kill him. For some reason, they cannot kill him. He refuses to die. That's what he said in this chapter. Um. So is he immortal? You know, is Dr. Mingo immortal? Is Law immortal? Are they both immortal? Really interesting stuff. So, let's assume that both of them are immortal. How would this happen? So, the, if, the, if both of them are immortal, then I would say Corazon made Law immortal, and Doflamingo's mom made Doflamingo immortal. That's that's the theory I'm I'm, I'm sort of you know gonna go with right now. Um, or maybe it was his dad because you know remember his dad did die, but the thing is they said he murdered his dad, not that his dad killed himself trying to save him. You know what I'm saying? So. It's most likely his mom. If both of them are immortal, I don't think a random stranger would just, you know, save a kid or willy nilly or anything. But I guess we'll just have to wait and see, you know, how Oda tackles this. But yeah, um, aside from that immortality stuff, the real craziness comes with the world government tr trump card. What is this trump card? Now, the fact that you can control personalities with OP OP food, and that would make it advantageous to you. Doflamingo said himself, if he had the OP OP no me when he discovered the trump card, he would have had the power to take over the world. So this means that the trump card are living things. It's not robots, it's living things. Because then with the OP OP no me, you'd be able to control the personalities and they'd probably work for you and stuff. So I think, you know, it's kind of like pacifista, but without the whole robotic thing. So they don't have any of the disadvantages of, you know, the robot stuff. And, you know, um, it's just, it's, it's pretty crazy. Um, I'm really keen to see right now. I'm thinking um, I'm thinking they have Sort of warriors from the void century, you know, they have sort of an army of them or something um, But in any case, let's sort of remember what Aokiji told 
Smoker and Punk Hazard. He told Smoker to send, um, to tell to tell Al Qaeda to send an admiral to Dressrosa because what the Flamingo is about to do is going to shake the world. And, you know, for something of that magnitude, it's crazy. But here's the thing. That's not the crazy thing. The crazy thing is Al KG knowing this, Detective Al KG knowing this, still did not go to Dressrosa himself. He still did not go to Dressrosa. He went with Blackbeard. So that means Blackbeard has crazier plans than Doflamingo. That's the only explanation. And the thing is, guess guess who is on Dressrosa? Burgess. So maybe maybe Blackbeard knows what, what Doflamingo knows. Maybe he's two steps ahead of Doflamingo. And he has sent Burgess to sort of steal this thing from Doflamingo. And then we have, you know, Moncherry from the Tontadas. Maybe her power has some sort of connection with this thing. I mean, I don't think she's an ancient weapon. I'm not getting that vibe. I think the dwarves would have known. But, you know, that said, you know, what power does she have? I'm kind of curious. Uh, if you have any good ideas, leave them in the comment section. But, uh, yeah. Um, I'm, you know, this whole OP OP thing, that also means that all this lead poisoning and shit that Law's getting, you know, it's not going to kill him. Uh, that's what it means. But, yeah, just overall, I think I think I said most of the stuff i need to say about this chapter um especially concerning the huge bombs i've given you guys a bunch of theories we have the the op op no me users you know do, the do flamingo family the immortality who might be immortal um the blackbeard thing you know uh it, it's it's there's so much that that there, there are so many ways or could go about this thing but i'm just i'm so i'm so hyped to see the trump card because i am sure that the trump cards are living things otherwise the op op wouldn't really be helpful I'm sure they're living things. I'm sure they have personalities. Um, you also have to think, why would Doflamingo? I mean, Doflamingo has the strength fruit, right? Which can kind of do the Bellamy shit and Parasite and all that kind of stuff. But I guess the thing is, with his fruit, the strength fruit, maybe you can only use physical things. Because, you know, we haven't really seen him use Parasite against a logger, for example. So, uh, I don't know. I'll just let that pass. I'll, I'll let that slide for now. But whatever, I think I've said enough, I've rambled enough, I'm starting to say all sorts of nonsense now. But yeah, oof, pretty long video. Uh, thank you for chilling all the way to the end. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And as always, thank you guys for watching.